we want to bring in now Dwayne Deskins. He's a former federal prosecutor and talk about the, the legal ramifications of the day. Um, I don't even know uh, where to start, <laughs> Dwayne. So let me just start by asking you, as we've asked many of our guests, um, from your position and where you watched what happened today, what are your thoughts and observations tonight? Well, thank you, Joe, for having me on. Uh, and, and I think every one of us has a concern is what we were watching the beginning, the middle, or the end of an insurrection or rebellion, or even just a simple protest. And as a lawyer and a prosecutor, one of the things that I want to look at is I want a thorough investigation. I want a thorough investigation of whether there was uh, uh, a seditious act that was committed here uh, by the protesters and others. And I want to find out the same thing about whether this was an insurrection or rebellion. It certainly had the hallmarks of that um, at various points throughout, including the loss of life um, and the threat to the members of Congress who were present and to the uh, first responders who were woefully outmanned and on the scene. Um, the second thing is, is I wanted to find out also through a thorough investigation uh, why the response was so low. And let me just say this. Law enforcement has remarkable tools. Homeland Security and others have remarkable tools to kind of keep us always ahead of what's going to happen bad to us. And when you saw what happened today, it wasn't that it wasn't known. It just wasn't responded to as it should. And does that mean that everything would have been different? Well, we don't know. But it certainly could have been if it had been met with the same degree of response as we would expect from other types of events. And so I want to know why that response was slow. And even the woman who was injured today, perhaps had there been a better response, maybe she doesn't find herself in the Capitol building and maybe she goes home to her family. Uh, all of those things, I think, require a thorough investigation because people want to know, are we at the beginning, the middle, or the end of something far more dangerous to our republic? And the only way you're going to do that is through a thorough investigation. And, Duane, I mean, there will be no lack of evidence given the fact that this happened at our nation's capital. But as a prosecutor, uh, w the crimes that were committed, holding people accountable for the damage that was done, uh, what are you looking for, legally speaking, um, in what you saw today? So there are, thank you for the question, that you start at the beginning. What evidence do you have of a conspiracy or an agreement? Much of that can be driven through the Internet and communications. Um, thankfully, there will be plenty of those. Um, you're going to have uh, cameras, as you mentioned, throughout the District of Columbia. So you'll be able to see the actions of the leaders of these groups through their social media conversations as well as their presence on the mall and on the Capitol grounds and in the Capitol building. Um, you're going to be able to follow all that through, and that will help you, as I say. And then you want to go back in time to see, well, was this the first of something that these group of people did together, or is this the middle of something? Or, and indeed, is there, are there other things planned, either at the Capitol or other capitals in other states? I think you need to answer all those questions, but you do have tools that can help you. And I think the full authority and weight of law enforcement from the FBI down to the District of Columbia Police to every local jurisdiction should be brought to bear because people are genuinely afraid of what might happen and what did happen. Well, they're genuinely afraid of going to jail, right? So if you were involved in acts today, what are the, what are the potential uh, charges that they could face federally uh, for what we saw? Certainly, you can scale these up or scale these down. So, for example, something simple as trespass on federal grounds, small offense, misdemeanor, all the way up to insurrection or sedition, one 25 year, 20 years and one 10 years. So you have things like that, damage to government property. Um, you can go on and on, but the idea of conspiracies, attempts, 
you can make this as big or small as you want to, but you need to put your hands around all of the people who are involved and hold them accountable because some people will be able to give you information, as you know, from just your basic criminal cases that you cover so thoroughly. Sometimes you may need human intelligence, and the threat of prosecution with a serious crime often leads people to be more forthcoming than they would be without it. So you need to be able to have the full array of, of, of tools, um, prosecutorial tools, so that you can get all the information you need to be able to charge the ringleaders of these acts. And Dwayne, let me let, let me ask an uncomfortable yes. but necessary question because of the cultural and political moment that we're in and so much discussion about this on social media tonight. Mm -hmm. Do you think the reaction from law enforcement would have been different had most of those people climbing through the nation's capital been black instead of white? You would like to think the answer should be no. But that goes to, the, again, the question that I asked, what did you know and when did you know it? And then what did you do with what you knew? And I don't think that you should speculate on what could have happened when you know what did happen. And what did happen was bad enough. And it seems clear to me that we could have a reason to expect a better response. You saw those pictures. One man against 50 people. Uh, why is that one uh, Capitol Police officer squaring off against 50 people and now there are 50 members of law enforcement and the National Guard scoring off against one person. Where were the people? Where were the people in authority who had the right to make those decisions? And why didn't they make them? Because importantly, again, I correct, you can correct me on this. Much of this protest was already pre-planned days, maybe even weeks in advance. Everyone knew the date the Congress was going to count the electoral votes. So that wasn't a mystery. And it wasn't a mystery that we were going to have a protest that day. So the only mystery is, why was our response so weak at the beginning and at the middle and so strong at the end? And, and the rest, we're left to speculate. But I think we have a right to answer that question. How many do you ultimately think, Dwayne, that we'll see pursued here for prosecution? Uh, I, how many did we hear numbers on how many were arrested? I mean, 30, Thirty was the Bryant, the which is Bryant. hard to believe when you when you see what happened there today. That's so, it. do you think That's this it. is a, a matter of them now then going over video and they're going to pick, you know, the the top ten or thirty worst offenders in this thing, or do you think some of these folks are going to say, look, we we just got out of hand. It was a joy ride, and they didn't realize how serious what they were doing was. Well, I think you always want to try to get the leadership of any organization. Um, and, and then maybe they're often enough where the people who are caught are the low-hanging fruit. So that's why I said you sometimes need human intelligence because if you're smart and you're the ringleader, you're not going to find yourself in the mix. You're going to send other people. But you need to find out the whole picture of it before you decide to say, well, it's just these number of people that we arrested because that may not be the people who are the critical people in the, in the process. And, and some of those people may be able to help you along with the social media, the uh, communications, uh, as well as the uh, camera video of who was involved. And also, I have these people been involved in other activities. You saw what happened with the governor of Michigan. Are there other things that are in the hopper that are, not, that are planned and not yet executed? You need to know that as well, because you don't want to wait until the bad thing happens before you act. And, and so that's what I'm saying, that you need to do a thorough and complete investigation, bring the full weight of all of our law enforcement and Homeland Security intelligence to bear to get to the bottom of this. But there so was. People have faith in their government, and our allies feel safe with us, and our adversaries, whoever they are, feel respect and fear from us. Otherwise, we're not going to have any of those things. And Mr. Deskins, from what I can tell on social media, there were rioters who were in the Capitol today who were on social media, who were on Facebook Live, who posted pictures to social media with stolen items from Congressman or woman so-and-so's office. In Absolutely. other words, finding Absolutely. some of these folks shouldn't be hard if there's a selfie of it. 
Exactly right. And that's the, the one great thing of our society today. No one can do something horrible without taking a picture of themselves doing it. Um, because there are people who they need to impress. And you should want to find out who that might be. It may be the general world. It could be somebody in particular. But the point of it is, I don't think that that, and I tend not to believe in coincidences, that it's a coincidence that all these things just happen. I, I, I tend to think that there is a bit more organization because they wouldn't have gotten where they did. i put it this way. If you try to do it, you wouldn't succeed. These people did, and in large numbers. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? And we don't have an answer to that question, and we and the American people need to have an answer to that question. And the American people should demand an answer to that question. I just want to follow that up by asking you how much weight is there in the defense of free speech for people involved in what we saw happen today, in the defense the of uh, the right to gather peacefully? Well, you know what? There's never been an insurrection or sedition in the history of the world in which the leader of the insurrection and sedition did not openly say, whatever I'm about to do is going to be in the best interests of this country and these people. That is always what's said. The question is, it's not so. But well, the point is, it's not so. And so you need to be able to find out the answers to the questions I posed, because that answer is not sufficient. That, oh, I'm doing this for your good, Every insurrection is done for somebody's good. At least that's what they're told. But it's not true. And this is no different. So there's no defense behind that argument? No, I, I think that people are always going to say it's, a, it's the, me acting through the First Amendment. But again, the First Amendment protects protest and speech. Mm -hmm. What you saw in the Capitol today was violence. I mean, that's the thing we need to separate. Someone breaks into your house is not an act of protest. And okay? someone who breaks into the Capitol is not an act of protest. No matter what they want to call it, which is fine, but it doesn't make it so. So let me ask this. We always, and I hope this isn't too much of a media issue, but I do think people discuss this. What's the mm -hmm. right word to use? Protesters? Rioters? What, in this moment, considering we, the tape, the facts, the tape, the reality of what happened here today, legally, from a, a lawyer's point of view, what should we in the media rightfully and accurately call them? Well, as I say, if you look at what was done today, not what was said about what was done, but what was done, they stopped the lawful proceedings of the Congress of the United States certifying the transfer of power from one president to the other. They stopped it. And my sense is that action is what transfers this from being just a protest to an act of sedition or insurrection. And they did that by taking over the Capitol, by assaulting law enforcement officers there to protect the members of Congress, and damaging the property of the building at the same time. Protest is fine. We've had protests for the last 60 days about this election. And no one has characterized it, and nothing has gone on what, along the lines of what you've seen today. We have to be able to say, is this an act of setting a, uh, using bad language <laughs> that you would say to your kids don't use? Or is this an act of lighting a match that could set the whole house on fire? I tend to think it's more of a ladder even though you say, well, what's the difference in words or, or just a match? One has a potential to cause grave harm, and one is just a matter of, of how you should approach people. I think that this is really more of the latter, and all the violence you saw and the reaction of the people you saw inside, genuine fear of their lives, I think that that's different. All right, maybe a vote for insurrectionist right, is I'm what sorry. I got out of that, but uh, I, I won't hold you to it. I, I wanted to have that discussion because I agree. these are not. If there's a person sitting back on the mall by the by the uh, by the Lincoln Memorial, yeah, sitting there saying with a waving a sign, yeah, maybe that person's a protester. But the people you saw aligned on the sides of the Capitol building 
in the hallways of the Capitol, in the well of the Senate, those are not protesters. No way, no how. Those are people who are engaged in insurrection. Put it this way. What more would they have to do to, to convince you that they are, yeah. that they didn't do today? All right, That's Dwayne, why you know. Right. Dwayne Daskins, uh, Deskins, thank you so much. Former federal prosecutor, we appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you so very much. I appreciate your time.